when I heard they were going to spray Berkeley, uh, I didn't want to be sprayed. Uh, I, I understand um, and understood when I had women with children screaming at me when I was a MedFly science advisor not to spray for MedFly, why we would look for other ways to deal with the bug and why we would look for better ways of dealing with the public. So one, I didn't want to be sprayed and two was why is this so out, uh, out of control in the public's mind when I thought we learned how to bo deal both with the insects and with the public. So I was disappointed that it was becoming such a such a scandalous looking proposal that was being put out. And uh, so then I had to look at it and I had to decide whether I wanted to stick my head up out of retirement, which I really enjoy. I never wanted to uh, to um, get into bug wars again, but um, there's just some things I don't like about this. Um, and they have to do with um, starting how this was being presented, as being presented as an eradication program with medical issues. Well, I agree with the medical issues. I don't want to be sprayed with this stuff. Um, but, but it was being presented as a, a potentially successful eradication technique that had these other issues. And my issue is that it's not a potentially successful eradication technique. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thank you. I'm Daryl Chambers, and my intent today is to bring to this matter my experience in the development of insect pheromones and pest management. And you'll pardon me if I read this, because I want to get it right. I retired from the U.S. Department of Agriculture in 1994 after nearly 40 years, largely devoted to developing pheromones and hormones as they emerged as new opportunities to avoid the use of pesticides. I obtained a Ph.D. in 65 in insect physiology precisely to prepare for this new area of research. Thereafter, I returned to the Agriculture Research Service of USDA and specialized in conducting and directing pheromone development until my retirement. I'm fully in favor of eradicating emerging pest populations in California where it's necessary and feasible. Nevertheless, I do not support the aerial application of pheromone to attempt eradication of LBAM. There are a number of ways pheromones are used to deal with pest insects. They're one of the best alternatives to reduce or avoid pesticide use. That said, no eradication of a pest species with only mating disruption has ever been accomplished. An attempt to eradicate the gypsy moss was the only regional standalone mating disruption eradication yet attempted, I'm aware of, and that attempt has been reduced to its application in suppressing populations and delaying the pest spread. All other applications are for suppression only and are accompanied by multiple supporting integrated tactics. In fact, the recommendation to CDFA by the advisory working group on LBAM specifically states, in addition to mating disruption, the program should consider using a multi-pronged integrated approach and then lists a series of tactics that should be integrated. I'm hoping to convince you today that I'm qualified to consider the principles of pheromone uses, the strategies for their employments, the tactics for their use, and the complexities in planning and managing these large-scale eradication pro programs. It's my judgment that mating disruption alone is not appropriate for Cal California situations and probably never will be. Mating disruption for eradication of, of LBAM, even with the recommended supporting tactics, is unlikely to succeed and certainly has not been adequately tested. The political and social sensitivities of an unconvincing project are not being adequately addressed. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. I think the public should, one, not be willing to be sprayed with a microencapsulated um, pheromone. We don't know what the capsules are, what the other ingredients are, or what the pheromone itself are in terms of risk. To, uh, to the basic mechanisms of life within our bodies because um, these are meant to interfere with the basic mechanism of life in the insect. We share so much you know, genetically and, 
and physiologically as a result of our genetics with all of the living organization that, organisms that uh, um, risks are not what we used to think they were. You know, better things for better living through chemistry sold a lot of DuPont products for many years and uh, we should challenge chemistry a lot more than we do. Understanding of genetics and the understanding of the interrelationship between gene control of protein um, production and action um, and, the, and the increasing development of, um, of complete or incomplete genome description for living organisms. We all share 60% you know, of our genes with fungus, and 70 or 80% with bugs, and 80 or 90, 95% with um, all mammals, and 99% with, with uh, other uh, anthropoids. Well, that means that the whole process of, of, of um, the procedures of the cell and the interaction between cells and the way cells communicate and the way we communicate and the way our bodies function are similar to all other life. We're cousins with all other life. So if, it, if, if the pheromone itself or the goo it's wrapped in um, affect um, the insect that's the target, um, I, I'm a, concerned that it affects lots of other life, other insects, right? up into up to and including us.